What is going on everyone? Welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the MI Gardener channel. I am so excited for today's video because in today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you methods to preventing pests in your home orchard during the off season. Now the off season is not a time that we typically think about pests. You know, I, I know during the growing season, the main growing season where everything is looking beautiful, we talk about how to prevent aphids and white flies and spider mites and tomato hornworm and cabbage moths and all these pests that we talk about and I think we so focus on them because they're the main growing season pests that we lose focus on the ones that can come during the off season. And the thing that I'm here to tell you is that the pests that come during the off season that affect your orchard, those are the ones that are very inconspicuous. Those are the ones you don't even realize are there until you see the damage. And it's so important that we stop them before they cause damage or cause a lot of damage because the damage that they cause can be 10, 20 times, if not 100 times worse than those other pests. And that's because these pests, they're ones that actually cause actual damage to your trees. You know, if you're talking about aphids, aphids will eat the, the juice out of the leaves. They'll cause some stress and they can, you know, uh, cause some malnourishment and cause the plant to grow more slowly. But they're not really going to kill a fruit tree. You might have aphids on a few leaves, but the chance of having an outbreak that's so great that kills your tree is slim to none. But now let's talk about something like the oriental fruit moth. Is that, a, is that a pest that you've heard of before? Well, we have done videos on it and showing signs of them during the main growing season where they lay eggs and they burrow into the, uh, into the tips of your trees, causing dieback and flagging. We've talked about that and ways to identify it and how to prevent them during the main growing season. You see, oriental fruit moth will breed and feed during the main growing season. They'll cause damage that slows the tree down, you know, it causes uh, some damage, but it's not something that could actually kill it. During the off season, their burrowing and nesting habits in, your, in the uh, uh, trunk and bark of the trees can actually cause the tree to die because it's causing damage to the cambium layer. And the cambium layer is the protective skin of the tree. And so that can open up uh, a whole host of, of things to bacterias, funguses, other pests, diseases and whatnot. And so it is very important that we stop the oriental fruit moth. But there are other pests as well that can come in and a lot of them are just looking for a home to protect themselves from the cold weather. And so the negative side effect of them doing that is the plant uh, being, being harmed and potentially even dying. And so without further ado, I did want to talk about today's sponsor because we do have a sponsor and it applies to today's video and that is Chapin. Now Chapin produces uh, home and garden sprayers. They have other products as well, but I have personally been using Chapin sprayers for as long as I can remember. In fact, this sprayer here, when they reached out to me, they said, Luke, we'd really love to sponsor an episode. And so Chapin is a, is a company that produces top-notch products that we absolutely love and we use all the time. And so when they reached out to me, I said, uh, absolutely, I would love if you sponsored our video because I use this sprayer. They sent me a sprayer to use uh, in the video. And I said, well, to be honest, I don't even need a, a free product because I bought one myself like four years ago and I'm still using it. And I use this one in the fall. This is my fall sprayer. I put all my fall spray in there so there's no cross-contamination with all my other plants because we use sprays in here that are organic and are safe to use in the garden, but I just don't want to spray on plants that don't need that spray. And so we'll talk about the sprays that we're going to use, but this is the sprayer that we're going to be using. And so I want to thank Chapin for sponsoring this episode because if it was not for our sponsors, we typically do about four a year. And if it was not for those sponsors, we would not have the quality content that we have. It takes a lot of, uh, it takes a lot of uh, resources to produce these videos at the level that we do. And so I really appreciate Chapin. I will have uh, their links to all their products in the uh, description box below. And I will have a link to this specific one that I've been using for four years now. So Chapin, thank you so much for your sponsorship. I really appreciate it. Let's get on into today's, into today's video where we're gonna talk about what is inside this Chapin sprayer. So what is inside this is a one-to-one -one ratio of, let me get it for you. This, this is citrus, fruit, and nut orchard spray. We talked about this at nauseum, this is our go-to spray. I love it because it has a combination of sulfur and pyrethrin. I absolutely love sulfur and pyrethrin because sulfur helps to reduce funguses and mildews, which can happen during the off season when it's uh, cold and wet. That is what funguses love is cold, wet uh, weather. 
and also pyrethrin because pyrethrin helps to stop the reproductive cycle of many different pests. So I love pyrethrin. And then I also use neem oil. Now neem oil when used in combination with pyrethrin is a very potent combination. Neem oil comes from the neem plant. It's organic. Pyrethrin actually comes from a, uh, it comes from a daisy. And uh, so yes, it's organic. It's a concentrate. It's very potent. And when used together, I use a one to one ratio. I've used, uh, in this one gallon sprayer here, I've used two tablespoons of the orchard spray and two tablespoons of the neem oil. And all I've done to make sure that it mixes up really well is I've added one drop, just one tiny drop of dish soap. And that's because oil and water don't mix. And so I really wanted to make sure that the oil from the neem oil mixes in and emulsifies with the water. And that's all I've done to this one gallon sprayer here. Now. We've got it all pumped up and we're going to spray. And the reason why we're going to spray right now, I love spraying in the fall, especially with this concentrated pesticide because there's no beneficials that are around. You know, during the main growing season, you can have stuff that's flowering and these can harm things like honeybees uh, and some of your other pollinators, which I don't want to do. But I also know the value of these trees and the value that they are to me. And so I'm willing to spray them with some of these more potent organic uh, pesticides because they can prevent the pests that come during the off season. So the first step that we do, this is the first thing that we always do is we always spray down our trees. We're gonna spray down the trees. We're gonna get the, the branches, get the tips, get absolutely anything that could potentially host an insect because what they will do what, this, what the oriental fruit moth will do is at night, it'll come, it's a nocturnal insect, it'll fly around and it will actually lay eggs near the crooks and little crevices of your fruit tree. They're not typically down below the soil level. And so from the soil level up, we wanna focus our spray. Now, one quick thing to note is that this not only works on the oriental fruit moth, but this also works on a whole host of other borers. That is our objective with spraying this pesticide during the off season is to prevent the borers. The borers are the things that, that they burrow into the bark of the trees. And so our main objective with our, with our peach trees is against the oriental fruit moth, but there are many others. There is the, uh, the plum curculio, there is also the shot hole borer. There is the common peach borer. There's the lesser peach borer. There's the emerald ash borer. There is the apple borer, the flathead apple borer. There are so many boring insects. And I don't say that in a joking way. There are these, these insects are so boring that it's very important to prevent them because if you don't, they're going to burrow into your trees and they will cause damage. So it is very, very important to spray them. So with that out of the way, I'm just gonna to continue to spray this tree down until it is dripping. Once it is dripping and the bark has been saturated, I know that step one to preventing these pests has been done. Two quick things to note as well. One, if it's going to rain, wait. You need at least 24 to 48 hours before uh, a rain in order to use this. And that's because you want a long period of time for this to soak into the bark and really act as a protective barrier. So if it's going to rain, wait. The next thing to note is I absolutely love the Chapman sprayer for this very simple thing. It's a very simple thing, but I love this bent tip. Now this bent tip allows me to spray both the top and the underside of the trees or whatever I'm spraying. And that's just a simple thing but it goes a really long way to making sure that there's good coverage because when you're spraying a tree, it's important not to just to spray the top, but also the underside so that it's truly saturated because pests so often, they actually, they don't come on the top of branches because that's where birds and other predators can find them. They actually are far more commonly found on the underside of the branches. Fun fact for you, but if you were a pest and you were trying to stay away from a hungry bird, where would you go? the underside. And so with this little, this little thing, it's a little thing, but I love it so much. I love having this little bend in this chap and sprayer nozzle because it allows me to get underneath and really soak those branches down. So I love it. Thanks Chapin. I really appreciate it. Thank you for creating such a good product. All right, I'm going to finish soaking this tree down and then we're going to move on with the second step that we do to preventing pests. Now, the second thing we do to prevent pests is we look for damage. 
Now, anytime there's damage to a tree, that is damage to the cambium layer already. This might be a broken branch. You might have had a strong wind or maybe something just snapped or maybe you were pruning incorrectly with some dull pruners and it caused there to be some frayed edges or some, some tear out. And anytime you have damage, that can be a, a place where pests can come in and burrow. And so if you've been pruning, make sure that you have really good sharp pruners. Check for that damage before the off season occurs so that you know kind of where there might be some spots that are more susceptible to pests. If you had a branch that, uh, that happened to break and you had a lot of, a lot of damage, uh, you know, damaged tissue to the tree, go in there with a tree paint. There's a lot of different tree paints that exist, but make sure you find one that you like to use. And uh, I like to use a nice white tree paint and you can actually paint over the damaged area of the, of the bark and that can help act as a skin so that pests and other things cannot get in. Pests as well as mold and mildew. And so that can really help to go a long way to keeping your tree alive uh, you know, when it's damaged. And over time it, it should heal and, uh, and it should kind of scab over, but you really don't want that, that open flesh or that open, uh, you know, that open tissue there where insects and, and disease and stuff can get in. So look for damage, that's the second thing. All right, and the third and final thing that we do to preventing pests during the off season is we remove any debris from around the tree. This could be things like a lot of leaves or old mulch or anything that could really uh, give a good cover around the tree. We'll also come by here and we'll actually pull away the mulch because mulch can act as a cover, as some protection for, uh, for some different pests. And so what we'll do is we'll actually come by here and we'll just, just for the winter months, we'll come by here and we'll pull the mulch back. This is something that I see uh, far too often. Our gardeners that, uh, that keep that mulch pushed up real close to the tree during the off season. Now the purpose of mulch is to protect it from drying out. It's to protect the soil from drying out. But in the winter when you have snow and rain and, and there's really uh, not a whole lot of drought like conditions uh, that exist, Having that mulch there can protect the soil. Uh, you can protect uh, the, the soil temperatures and keep the roots warm throughout winter. Yes, that is important, but we don't need it so close to the trunk. You know, we really don't need it tucked right up there. And that can really cause a lot of uh, pests to come in and burrow real, uh, you know, real close to the trunk of the tree. And it just takes a little bit for them to start burrowing into the tree itself. And so what we'll do is we'll pull that, that mulch back. I do it every year. I'll pull it back only about five to seven inches. And that way it is pulled away from the tree. And that way anything that's going to find cover and protection down in the mulch and down in there uh, is not going to be uh, as, as encouraged. It's gonna discourage some of, those, some of those pests from burrowing into the mulch there. And that will really cover most of your burrowing and dormant pests because like I said, a lot of these pests are not coming for food. They're coming for shelter. And so if we can, um, if we can reduce their shelter and make it less uh, habitable, um, we can help to reduce our pest issues. And also then that's gonna force them to go somewhere else or not even live there in the, in the, uh, in the first place. And it's gonna cause some of them to die, which is gonna reduce your numbers next year as well. So it's a total win-win. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you learned something new. I really do hope that you'll apply some of these tricks to your garden. I know that, uh, you know, when we're talking about fruit trees, uh, it is something that a lot of people struggle with. A lot of people really want to do better at. And this is something that I think a lot of gardeners can do better at, which is preventing pests in the off season. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you learned something new. Thank you so much, Chapin, for sponsoring this episode. And again, I will have links to all of their products, uh, or to where, where you can buy, not all of their products. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have links to where you can buy their products in the, uh, in the description box below. And I thank you so much. And uh, as always, this is Luke from the MI Gardener channel, reminding you to grow big or go home. Have a wonderful day. Get out in the garden. Enjoy the season while it's still here. And we'll catch you all later. See ya. Bye.